Amen, amen, amen. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome each and every one of you. I am your instructor today, Elder Marshall Jenkins, one of the administrators here on Soldiers on Fire for Christ. I welcome each and every one of you that's here and those going to come on and those who are going to view this video. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, 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 we're going to do a part three, I believe, a part three, I believe, on defeating jealousy. And how can you kill it? How can we kill jealousy when it's on a rampage right now? Jealousy, envy, hatred, all those things of above is on a rampage, especially in the body of Christ. I ain't talking about the world. I'm talking about in the body of Christ. Those things, jealousy, hatred, envy, all those things is rampaging in the body of Christ. My key scriptures will be coming out of James chapter 3, verses eight, uh, 13 through 18. I'm going to ask my pastor to read that scripture at the Apple Bible version. Then I want uh, Minister Isaiah to come behind her with the King James version. Then I want uh, uh, my second scripture is 1 Corinthians yes. chapter 3, verses uh, 1 through 9. I'm going to ask the apostle to come out the King James Version. Then I'm going to ask Minister Rose to come out of the Amplified Version. Then I'm going to come out the Living Life Application uh, Bible out of each one. Then I'm going to give a, a, a scenario out of each scripture, and we're going to talk about this. So in that order, in that order, once the class gets started, that's what the order is called. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. So what was my scripture? Was my scripture James 3, 13? Through 18. Yes, ma'am. I mean, was it James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18? Yes, ma'am. 313. Uh, thank you. Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, uh Mr. Isaiah. James 3, 13 through 18. Amplified uh, uh Pastor. Then you come with the King James. Then I want Apostle. To come, to come with 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 9 out the King James. The Minister Rose come out of the Amplified with the same, with the same scripture. Now I'm going to come out the life a life application Bible out of both. Then we're going to go over the scriptures and things just the way the Lord had led me. I did, I had another way to go with it, but Lord I say go with it this time. We're going to break these scriptures, y'all. Amen. So let me get into prayer. Then after prayer, I'm going to have my little announcement. Then after my announcements a little bit, then I'm going to go into my theme song. Then after my theme song, we're going to get right into class. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, we come before the throne of grace. And thank you, Father God. I, especially your son, Elder Marshall, thank you, Father God. Come <clears throat> with a humble heart, sound mind, Father God, and a willing spirit to be taught, to be led, and be guided. I cannot do this by myself, Father God. I need your, I need your spirit to dwell up in me, Father God. So the things that I speak today, Father God, won't be of Marshall. It will be of you. So the people can get some understanding about how jealousy is on a rampage among your people. You ain't called us to envy one another. You ain't called us to be jealous of one another. You called us to uplift, encourage, and guide one another, be there to support one another so that we can finish this journey with a positive note, Father God, because we need each other. We we have to be there to support one another. But the jealousy, hatred, and all bitterness and all those things is rampaging. It is not a, a pleasing in your sight. So, Father God, as I decrease, I ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to increase in me. Give me the knowledge. Give me the wisdom. Give me the understanding. Reveal to me the mystery of these scriptures so I can break them down according to your will and your purpose so that people can apply them to their lives, that they may be understanding how to deal with jealousy and how to kill it. 
when it comes among them or themselves. Because we have, Father God, found ourselves sometimes that we have been jealous of other people. And people have been jealous of us and tried to kill the things that you have us to do. So I thank you, Father God, and I praise you, and I seal this prayer, and I seal this prayer in your precious Son, Jesus' name, Mr. Christ, and we ask the body of the church to say amen, amen, and amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Announcements goes as follows. Tomorrow, same time, same channel, we're going to have our own minister role. Christine Jackson will be coming forth with her with her topic in Bible study tomorrow, same time. If you would like to come out and support this young lady, she's a powerful, wonderful teacher. If you would like to come out and support this young lady, please inbox myself, Elder Marshall Jenkins, Pastor Teresa Vini, Apostle Robert Ryman, Minister Ro Minister Isaiah. Robinson and Elder Bud Dillon with your email address and each and every one of us will add you to her class so you can participate with her. She is a wonderful teacher. Then coming up on on uh next Monday, August, we as the men here on Soldiers Don't Fight for Christ will be coming forth together as as a, as a unit to send up prayer for the people and in ourselves. So if you would like to participate. Just uh, go to our pages, and we have the number in our page. And, and, and if you would like to participate, just dial the number on the flyer. Then coming up on the 30th of this month, we will have our meet and greet meeting here on Soldiers on Fire with Christ. That will be at 7, that will be at 7 p.m. And we here as the moderators and, and administrators will be coming together to support, encourage, and have a little fun and, and talk about what's on our hearts so that everyone can get to meet each and every one of us. We are here to encourage and uplift. So if you would like to come out and participate, once again, just email either one of us. We will glad to add you to the meeting. So you can get to know us and things. We have a good system where we we in, encourage and things. And I, I love the fellowship, and I believe you would too. Amen. Then my final my final uh, uh, announcement would be St. Jude. We are, we are here on Soldiers on Fire for Christ. Uh, uh, the Spirit put on my pastor heart to, to uh, uh, fellowship. Or, or come together with St. Jude, to partner with St. Jude to help raise a million dollars for these children. These kids need our support, people. These kids need our support. And if you would like to support us in the mission that God has put on my pastor's heart, please go to any one of our page. They are, it is posted. All got to do is hit donation. St. Jude requires five dollars donation. Whatever God puts on your heart to so above five dollars, please do hit donation. Send the link. We don't get the money. Go straight to St. Jude. St. Jude will give you ask you for your email address so they can give you confirmation that they have received your your donation, and then they will start sending you little gifts and things to show you how much they appreciate and value your support for these children. So I just thank you for your uh, patience. And we're going to go ahead. That's the end. That concludes my announcements at this time. I'm going to go into my theme song. And once we go into the theme song, we're going to go ahead and go into to class. Amen. I do not own the rights to this music. I do not own the rights to this music. Once again, I do not own the rights to this music.
Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Just got to notice that my music was in and out. I'm so, I apologize for that because I don't show have a church over here. You don't know because God is my everything. I can't speak about nobody else, but God is my everything. He ain't something. He's my everything. And he should be your everything in your life. Amen. Amen. So let's go forth and, and start this class. Amen. Pastor, will you please open up your scripture for me, please? Amen, amen. Good evening, everyone. Social media out there and everyone in the virtual classroom. Amen. Thank you for joining us, those that are coming in. If you missed the topic, Elder Marshall, let you know, defeating jealousy, how can you kill it? This is part three, and I will be opening up with scripture reading from the book of James. Let's get your devices out. Get your book. James chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. Amen. And I believe Apostle Robin is working the chat so you can get the scriptures there as well. James chapter 3. Verses 13 to 18, I will be reading it from the Amplified Version. It's basically dealing with wisdom from above. And it says, who among you is wise and intelligent? Let him by his good conduct show his good deeds with the gentleness and humility of true wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and self-ambition in your hearts, do not be arrogant and as a result, be in defiance of the truth. This superficial wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, secular, natural, unspiritual, even demonic. Watch For out, where jealousy out. and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder, unrest. Yes. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Did someone say something? <laughs> Okay, everybody put your mics on mute because I'm hearing a type of feedback piece. I was at verse 16. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there is disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing and morally degrading practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, morally and spiritually undefiled, then peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle, reasonable, and willing to listen, full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering without self-righteous, hypocrisy and self-serving God. Last verse, and the seed whose fruit is righteousness, spiritually maturity, spiritual maturity is sown in peace by those who make peace by actively encouraging goodwill between individuals amen james amen. chapter 3 verses 13 through 18 the amplified version amen miss dalzell i had y'all mute i apologize who is wise and understanding among you let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy, selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it's earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For, who, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, 
there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who saw in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Amen. Amen. And and uh I'm gonna come out the life application, then we're gonna go over these scriptures. Then after we do James, then I have Apostle and Mr. Rose to come forth with First Corinthians. Uh First Corinthians three, one through nine. And the life application Bible reads as if you are wise, if you are wise. Live a life of steady goodness so that only good deeds will pour forth. And if you don't brag about them, then you will be truly wise. So many people like to brag about the knowledge that they think they have. Mm -hmm. That understanding that God has given you this knowledge. So why brag about something that God has given you? You know, you're not no smarter than the next individual. That's how Jelly Crip said, because people see the knowledge that they don't went to school and got all this education. Yes, I said it. Education. Yeah, I said it. Education. They went to school and they got all this education. Think they got all the knowledge in the world. But then when God give you the spiritual knowledge, check what I'm going with this. When God give us the spiritual knowledge, that's when jealousy and envy comes in because now they see how much knowledge you have obtained through the spirit. People think they have a lot of wisdom and knowledge from getting in the school and got all them certificates on a wall and all them good things. But the best knowledge to have is spiritual knowledge. It says, and by all means, do not brag about wise and good and good if you are bitter and jealousy and self. That is what's killing the body of Christ. We say it again. By all means, don't brag about being wise and good if you are bitter and jealous and selfish. That is the worst sort of lie. So many times we are walking around here bitter and jealous all be and selfish all because God has elevated sure somebody else faster than he has matured you. Why? Because you're not in the right position. You're not, you don't have the right attitude of being, of being elevated the way God wants you to. Now you want to be jealous and bitter and envy because God has elevated somebody else faster than he has elevated you. Be careful. Don't brag. Then it says, verse 15 says, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Oh, we. No, oh, he did. The word said, the word said, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of of wisdom. So if it's not God's kind of wisdom, what kind of wisdom is it? It's the enemy. If it's not God's kind, then it's the enemy kind. Only only two. Because now the enemy, that spirit of jealousy and envy has impact our spirit. I always say what you feed the most is going to dominate the most. And if you feed that jealousy, you feed that selfishness, it's going to dominate. It is not of God. 
So why be jealous of your brothers and sisters? It was always said, what God has for me is for me. What my pastors have is for pastors. What my ministers have is for my ministers. What my apostle have is for my apostle. What is for my elder is for my elder. What is for me is for me. I'm, I, it's no sense to be jealous of each one of our gifts because God unified those gifts to edify the church. It says, here you go, it says, such things are earthly, unspiritual, inspired by the devil. Oops, there you go. I said it. Thank God it's inspired by mm -hmm. the devil. Why is it inspired by the devil, Elder? Because the word tells us the devil comes to seek, kill, and destroy who he can evolve. So, so if you have those uh, tendencies and characteristics dwelling in your, your spirit, now he has destroyed, devoured, it, 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 it conquered the body of Christ because you allow those characteristics to divide the church. Are we walking around with jealousy? Are we walking around with bitterness? Are we walking around with bitterness? The devil is, is doing what he was loose to do. And if he has got a hold to your spirit to have those characteristics, he has accomplished one of his goals to break the unity of God. Verse 16 says, For who, for, for whatever there is jealousy or selfish ambition, there will be disorder. Oh my God. No, you didn't say that. Let me let me go back. Let me go back. For wherever there is jealousy or selfish ambition, there will be disorder in every other kind of evil. Disorder, dysfunction, out of place, wrong direction. All these things causes us to be in a defunctional family. We call ourselves, we say we are family, so why not act like family? But once we allow one, as they say, one weak link to come in, to defunction the family, everything falls apart. If that one weak link is carried around jealousy and envy, all things, all hell break loose. I'm going to say it, all hell break loose. Because now that one weak link is carrying around it, now it's going to spread because now it's going to be like gossip. <laughs> do you see? Do you see how this, do you see how uh, 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 Lady Johnson uh, uh, praised God? That don't make no sense. Why would she have to praise God like that? Because you don't know her story. Pastor Teresa get up and you know she always say this and that and that. Why she have to be all talking? Because you don't know her story. It's a story behind her glory. It's a story behind their glory. That's why they worship and do that. So why talk about? Why bring that envy? Why bring that bitterness? Why bring that hatred? Because it's in you. You just haven't tapped into it. You're walking around here with everything except the right thing. Let me get, let me get, let me get there. It says, verse 17 says, but the wisdom. <laughs> now, y'all remember, everything out the but is really what matters. It says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure and full of quiet and gentleness. This is peace loving and conscience. It allows decisions. It is willing to yield to others. Ooh, 
willing to give to others, especially when you're under a leader. So many times we won't lead, we won't yield to our leaders because of what? Now I'm talking about jealousy, and I'm talking about the way we ought to be able to kill it. And the only way to kill and defeat this jealousy that's among us, we have to bite it in the bush. We have to bite it in the butt. We have to get rid of it. That means even if you have to cut somebody loose. If you got to get them out, get them out. Because God wants the body of Christ to be unified. He don't want nothing to discord it. If you can't give, if the person you try, the, the person that has all these characteristics of jealousy, and the only way we have to kill it is get rid of it, get rid of it. Just like we try to get rid of, you know, one of the things, one of the hard things to get rid of is cockroaches. I don't know why the Lord brought me there. <laughs> but he's taking me here. One of the hardest things to get rid of is cockroaches. You spray it, you bomb it, you do all these things to get rid of that them, them, that bug because that bug is contaminating the, the premises, the surroundings, your home is contaminated. But the more that you bomb, the more that you do what you got to do to get rid of that bug, <coughs> sooner or later, you will get rid of that problem. You will get rid of that problem. So what I'm trying to say is, in order to get rid of that bug, you got to keep spraying that bug with deep, deep effect. You got to keep spraying that, that spirit with, with wisdom. You got to keep spraying that spirit with love. And sooner or later, you will get rid of it. It won't stay around because now it knows it's not wanted in your presence. That's how you kill jealousy. That's how you defeat it by love and by love and correction. You have to get rid of that weak link that is talk, that is bringing disorder in the body of Christ. It could be from being honest. It could be a family member. It could be a friend. It could be a close associate, whoever it may be. If it's not right, if it don't fit, don't force it. Let it go. If it don't fit, don't force it. Let it go. Then it says, it is full of mercy indeed. It is wholehearted and straightforward and sincere. Verse 18 says, and there, and those who are peacemakers, ooh, uh oh, those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap the harvest of goodness. Those who are peacemakers catch the point in order to kill jealousy, we have. To plant good seeds, we have to be peacemakers. That's why that's why the body of Christ is so out of order because there's no peace among the believers of body of Christ. Everybody got their own agenda. We have to plant good seeds in order to defeat <coughs> jealousy. My commentary, my commentary says, have you ever known anyone who claimed to be wise? Have you ever known anybody claim to be wise? It says, but acting foolish. Let me say that again. Have you ever known anybody claim to be wise but acting foolish. True wisdom can be measured by the depth of one's character. True wisdom can be measured by the depth of one's character. As you, as you identify a tree by the types of fruit 
it produces. You can elevate your wisdom by the way you act. Foolish leaders, oh, 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 oh. Foolish leaders to disorder, but wisdom lead to peace and goodness. Foolish leaders bring disorder in the body of Christ. Why do you say that, Elder? Why do you say it brings disorder? Because of jealousy among others in the body of Christ. Foolish leaders bring disorder. Here in James, here in James, here in James, it says, the Bible explores difference between worldly wisdom and godly wisdom and how people demonstrate their wisdom through their actions in worldly wisdom. This wisdom is self and greedy and prioritized personal interests over others. It characterized by envy, most ambition, jealousy, which can lead to disorder and evil godly wisdom. This wisdom is rooted in faith in God and leads to self-good works. It characterized by humanity, peace, gentleness, mercy, and sincerity. James say that the people cannot demonstrate their godly wisdom through their through their daily lives. Let me say this again. James says that people can demonstrate their godly wisdom through their daily lives. For example, he says that people who want to teach others need to show that they are wise through their actions. He also says that people can be sure they are wise and their lives are filled with jealousy and, and ambition. Let me say it again. He also says that people can be sure they are unwise. They are unwise if their lives are full with jealousy and ambition. Now, my brothers and sisters, families and friends, my question to you right now, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm piggybacking, and I want to hear everybody honestly word. Have you ever found someone being jealous of you in the ministry God had called you to do, and how did you deal with it? That's my question on the table before I go any further. Have you ever found somebody that has been jealous of the things God has called you to do? How did you deal with the jealousy to kill it and defeat it? Amen. Oh, it got quiet in here. We, yeah. Everybody turning Presbyterian. <laughs> it's yeah. quiet. It's, all good. it's, all good. it's real quiet in the Presbyterian it's all church. Good. They, they might be meditating. Well, I can say from experience, and God bless you all. I can say from experience, um, when I first became a prophetess, and um, I took all the scrutiny. Um, from people that didn't even know me and thought that, you know, well, she's quiet. She don't never say anything. How is she a prophetess? And, you know, I wanted to, the old me would have blew up and, and went back at them for everything they were saying, but I just killed it with quietness. I didn't say anything. I didn't go lash back out. I just kept quiet. So, and in the process of keeping quiet, everything went away, and then they be, and people began to see me for who I was, even though at first y'all were judging me and didn't even know the anointing that was on my life. So, I, for me, I say I killed it without, with quietness. Amen. 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 Anybody else like to tackle that question? Well, this is um, Taylor. And I don't know if this would have anything to do with that, but a friend of mine just lost her daughter like about three months ago. And he called her up that often and you know, she said, you know, God's been good to you. God has been really good to you. It was kind of like, I felt like if she didn't like, really kind of want me to be here, 
<laughs> you know, I love the family, love the kids, and I cried like the girl with my own daughter when I found out, you know. But I just took that a little bit. You know, how old are you now? And God has left you here. And, you know, so it was kind of like a little stab to me. But, you know, getting to a, Apostle Johnson, Yolanda, she's always been quiet. And that's the good thing. You know, you kill them with kindness, not, you know, stooping down to nobody level. That, and you're so right. People judge us in the church, how you pray, how you uh, walk, how you talk, how you dress. I mean, you know, just so many things. But just we got to be ourselves because at the end of the day, God loves us just the way we are. He accepts us if nobody else do. You know what I mean? I have Amen. to Amen. get away from Amen. That is so true. That is so true. And, and I love, I love the, the the way she put that because you got some more to say. Yeah, my I had got a phone call, but Elder uh, Marshall, you was really hitting the nail on the head because, like, another issue I had, like, uh, I take somebody to church, and it seemed like the word come out a better word for them, and they had been to drugs and supposed to be delivered and you're going to be rich and I don't really want to be rich but I like to have some money you know so Amen. You, you and me both. somebody want to follow you to church which is a good thing Amen. but then they get better blessing than you and you say well God what am I doing wrong you know like I'm in my bed now and for, for a few years I could kind of imagine something that I did you know mm -hmm. like I think the spirit was talking to me earlier and uh, somebody, you know, said something to me the other day that really kind of hurt my feelings. And I just interpreted it as God saying it. I told my husband about it. And he said, well, you know, they're really like, right. You know, I've been telling you, telling you, telling you. And, and like I said, if the spirit told me today, you need to stop, you know, because you put your mouth on other folks. That's how you ain't got enough on your own business. That's how come you still in the condition that you're in. They don't feel like I ain't doing nothing else. I got plenty to do, plenty of, of projects on my plate. Mm -hmm. I can multitask like that. So, you know, and I try to defend myself like that. Me has been me and all that. And like I said, I'm glad that, you know, like, for example, a, a Apostle Johnson, she done stayed the same. It, it was it was what I met her. You shouldn't. We shouldn't have. We don't change. We Amen. don't get up and and all that stuff just because we raise up and hire and you know what I mean. Amen. You stay humble because if you ain't like a child to try to get to heaven, you don't see him. So all that I know people like that too that then put themselves up and you know said I ain't gonna do this. I ain't gonna do that now. Well, and God blessed them so much with you know, money. Hey, maybe thank God at all. But, you know, just stay the same. Don't change. You know what I mean? Amen. And and only look to God or that's the only way you have to please. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. I appreciate Amen, your mother. input. Amen. Amen. I appreciate Amen. your input. Amen. My sister, and, and may God hear okay. you and bless Amen. you as you Go through this healing process at this present time. Amen. You will be back on your feet. You will be back on your feet. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. In this order, Amen. I saw Apostle Robert, Amen. Ms. Thoreau, I mean, Miss Isaiah, the Elder Bud, in that order. Amen. 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 Um, for me, you know, when I was in um, the church building, uh, there were many times where uh, people, you know, I would notice that they were jealous, you know, um, especially, you know, with music, because I've always really loved to sing and things like oh. that. And then there have been times where, you know, I would come like the choir rehearsal and, you know, I would come in the room and the room would get quiet, you know, and everybody was just like, like, you know, that's, that person is talking about you, you know, and everything. And it was just like, yeah. okay, you know, what's, you know, what's the problem? But, um, 
I, I kill them with kindness. You know, I don't want to say that word kill, but um, I am going to say that, you know. It's in my text. It's in my text. It's in my text. It's I know, right? So, you know, I did. I killed them with kindness, but I, I end up, you know, I prayed to, and then, um, you know, I would find myself backing away too, but that was the trick of the enemy, you know, and I wasn't real mature back then, you know, so it was like, and they feel the need to talk, you know, I was like, this is not the place for me, you know, but, and then that's when we get into that church hurt and all that, you know, but, you know, we, we got to make sure that we're coming, you know, for the right reasons, you know, and I was going for the right reasons, but I just didn't like, you know, the talking, you know, because, you know, God gives us all gifts, you know, and we're supposed to work together you know and and not worry about hey is she singing better than me or well mm -hmm. why she gotta sound like that or why she gotta be loud or you know how they talk you know Amen. so that just that that discouraged me but i thank god for you know the growth you know looking back on it you know we can't allow anyone to hinder us you know mm -hmm. when um that spirit of jealousy rises up you know we just got to pray for them and they're having issues within themselves you know we got to really realize that um they're the ones with the issues and and when god shows us those things we got to pray for that person amen so that's amen. what i have to say you, you definitely right you definitely right apostle we have to pray for those individuals because those individuals just carrying around that evil spirit trying to bring the fun mm -hmm among themselves and one of the things I found out when people do that when when people do that special leaders when they do that they don't want you to get above above them they want all the people to stay focused on them so those individuals that's carrying around all that jealousy want to keep you keep us at a low standard and keep themselves at a high standard but it's not going to work what, what God going to do, he's going to elevate, he's going to elevate us to a place where nobody's going to be able to come and, 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 and take what God has given us. Amen. Go ahead, Minister uh, Rose. I mean, Minister Isaiah. I still Amen. have this, Rose. You be after Elder Bug. Okay. Well, first, how I handle the jealousy in the church. First of all, I learned one thing that conquered the jealousy. People are just going to like you all the time. So that one of my mechanisms of protecting myself. And two, and I learned in the church of jealousy, you, you, a lot of times you think it's just the women in the church. It's a lot of the men. I've seen jealousies in the way I match my clothes. i see jealousy. I'm, 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 good, I'm good at in church if uh, people like to sugarcoat cut things spiritually. That I like to keep it real. And I I pull scripture and um uh, I have to get attitudes like who you think he is. But I'm, I'm poor. I went to the book and the answer, you know, with the questions and stuff. So I, I learned people get jealous of just a little simple thing, just in the church house. They, they uh learned um people get their little clicks because they don't like the way you present yourself, you know. It, but you stand in you stand in that spirit rim when you do, but you just got people just be jealous and they gossip. You know, so I just learned just to uh, smile, still speak, still be helpful. That's the one that really gets my time when they, when you know they, you know these people don't like you or whatever, then you start showing how kind and helpful you is. That's like a dagger in the heart sometimes, you know. So that's how I conquer that, that, that jealousy. And so I just keep it, keep it kind and try to be as polite as I can. Because, you know, people are always ain't going to agree with you. They always ain't going to like you. So I'm not going to let that really bother me. So I just deal with that type of attitude with just being kind. Amen. Amen. Elder Bud. Amen. Yeah, that's me, Elder Bud. Amen. Praise Amen. God. <laughs> um, uh, I want to share, share, share a couple things. Am I coming in clear? I hear you loud and clear. I hear you loud and clear. Am I coming in clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I just want to make sure because when it when when the spirit goes, it's gone because, you know, I remember when I was in a Methodist church and I was a lay speaker. You go to school six weeks straight and go to lay speaker school so that you can you had certain time you could preach in the church. And if you did longer, you could preach at somebody else's church. So I really, you know, I love the Lord with all my heart. I love him, 
you know, in a way that I need him more than anything in the world. And anyway, when I would start sharing, the topic was that I was doing, because I had a lot of stuff written down, and that don't work, because the Spirit of God, when you let the Holy Spirit work, he's going to do what he wants to do. And I'm getting ready here to say something. So anyway, I'm sitting here very calm and cool, and I ask people, I said, let me ask you something. When you came into church today, on Sunday morning, was you prayed up? Was you watching something that you shouldn't have been on TV the night before? Was you listening to something that you knew God told you not to? And then you come in here and you got nice clothes on. I said, God looks at the heart. So anyway, slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to anger. Those are three things that are my topic of my life. So anyway, um, last night, I usually go to bed late because I don't, you know, I live by myself. And I got a lot of things that go through my mind. But, you know, I do a lot of reading and I do a lot of listening to things on the phone, you know, that are good stuff. And I sat there and I didn't even know what time it was. I looked at a video. It was on there. But I did a video last night and it was it was late. I knew it was late. Everybody's usually in bed when I'm up. <laughs> But the idea is, it's my character that God has put into my heart. I'm not somebody that thinks they know everything. I don't even want to pretend to know everything. I don't want to pretend that i rich or anything else. I'd rather wear jeans that are just comfortable or whatever. But the idea is, it's the heart. God looks on the heart. As Jesus walked, he walked with compassion. But anyway, I sat there and I was doing this reading about God. I was learning about how, you know, people say, well, Lord, I need you. Please come here. I need you now. And I started realizing a revelation that I hadn't realized before. And I shared this with a couple of people that was in counseling the other day. That I don't have to call God. He's here. He's here right now. So I can tell Satan go. Let's go now. Leave. And it's that. Submit unto God. Resist the devil. And he has to flee. I know many years I struggled with that. But it was just came to me so much that God doesn't have to go all the way over here, all the way over there to reach me at this very second. So anyway, I sit there and I thought, well, Lord, I feel like making a video. You know, I just, I don't know. I just feel like it, but I don't know, you know, so I tried it. I'm sitting in a chair here and I had to set up all this kind of stuff with the phone that fell over and I was experimenting. And this is the whole thing. It's not boasting at all in pride. It's boasting in the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ for my soul today. Amen. That I want to be with him when it's time is over. We realize everything that's going on in the world would be crazy if we didn't. Jesus said, look around. So the more that it gets heavier in the world, the more powerful that the Spirit of God can move in quietness. So I'm sitting there reading this book about the when I call on him, he's right here already. So then it was like a spirit that just, I was talking to, I don't know, maybe I was talking to counseling. And I said, you know, I didn't realize that, hey, I don't have to listen to you. Go, Satan. Leave now and leave it right now. Just just speak. Don't even have to say, Jesus, just go. Just go because God is here right now with Amen. me. So Amen. anyway, I sat there and it was late. And I had tried to experiment a couple of times. So that didn't work. Facebook Live, I was messing with it. And so anyway, I sat there and I said, <laughs> you know, I'm here by my I'm here by myself tonight. And I thought, you know, I love Jesus. I love, I love to share about God. And there's nobody here, but I'm going to do this live anyway. We're going to go with it. And I just started reading about the, 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 the immensity of God. That, you know, he, he, he's, he's up there, but he's not pushed down. He's all kinds of things. I was reading about this. It's on the video, so I put it on Facebook. And I just went with it. 
And I know a couple times the page turned on me. And see, this is the whole idea. Sometimes we think we have to be so exact, but the Spirit of God is not like that. Sometimes you can prepare a whole message, and God doesn't do that. He says, I want you to do this. And Amen. I felt like, you know, we, we talk about, about, well, the Lord told me to do that. Hey, I don't know that. All I know is I felt glad to do it. I didn't want to. I hadn't been in the best right, you know, at that time of night. But I was wide awake. My spirit was awake. My body was tired, but my spirit was alive. Amen, because brother. When I think about the love of Christ, when I think about the power that's in the name of Jesus Christ, that Christ doesn't have to come up there, come down here, or over there, or here. He's right here right now. Lee, leave, Satan, Lee, right now. And it was, so, it was so amazing. I never saw it that way because I have struggled in a year of doing things that I shouldn't done and this and that. And it was like, wow, I had a power all the time right there that I have because I love Jesus. Amen, I love with Brother all my Bud. Heart. Amen, Brother Bud. So when I started stumbling over the page on the video, I thought, well, I'm not redoing this. I'm just me. You know, I remember one time I did a Brother video, Bud. my teeth fell out, and Brother I sat there and said, wait a minute, I gotta put my teeth in. I just kept Brother it. Bud. I didn't I didn't erase it. I didn't do anything because that is who Bud Dylan is. Amen. Bud Dylan is exactly this. I'm Amen. not trying to be anything, wear a suit and tie, anything that the spirit of God is alive. The fire that shut up in my bones, it came out at three or four in the morning. And I said, I'm just going to do this. So I watched it on TV. A lot of times I just send it out, get rid of it. And I watched it, you know, after, because it's just me. If I stumble over the page and can't find it at the moment, I say, just a minute, bear with me. And I just go with right there and keep on going. Amen, I don't brother let brother. it stop brother me brother. and hinder me. From saying, well, redo it again. I already did it twice, and I'm not doing it again. So that was it. So I yeah, put it out on Facebook Live. And so I'm learning more about the Facebook Live. But anyway, it wasn't the point. The point was, I didn't expect that. I didn't even think, I thought about it, but I thought, yeah, well, yeah, that's, bro. no, I don't think that's, I don't want to say it's God. You know what I mean? Because I know the Holy Spirit in my life is, is captured in me more that I'm alone, that I can re realize that I'm not alone anymore. He's right here. Satan, go. You know, it's so much real that I just read me. It's called The Attributes of God by A.W. Tozer. And I'll tell you what, he breaks it. He, he breaks it down to realize how simple and powerful and awesome God is. So when we are slow to speak, and quick to hear will be sensitive to somebody else rather than thinking that we're in the picture. We're not in the picture. We're here because the Spirit of God speaks in my heart to flow out. And so leave it at that. And that's how the Spirit of God works in my life. Amen. 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 Praise God. Minister Rose, you had your hand up. Can you repeat the question now? The question was, have anybody ever been jealous of you and how did you kill it? Amen. Amen. I um I know of a couple occasions. I had one sister that um she um used to always when I you know raise my hand or something in Bible say yeah that's right the Bible scholar know it and let the Bible scholar tell it you know and um I you, I just kept on ignoring her and then I still speak to her just like normal and everything and stuff like that and, and it's just almost like that she learned how to keep her distance from me. For some reason, I had no idea why she disliked me. So years later, after I had uh, had left the church, I seen her. Uh, I had a doctor's appointment, and she was at the doctor's office the same. 
I was, and I was like, oh, hey, how you doing? You know how you see people and you greet them and everything? And we usually, how you do church folks, y'all give each other a look, you know, that little hug, that church hug. She said, forget all that. Uh, 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 give me your number. And I'm like, the devil is a lot. Well, I'm not giving her my number, but I, the way, because I know, I said, if she act like that, that means she's still the same way she was before. So the way I treated her, I said, I'll tell you what, give me your number. And I took her number and I did not use her number because I knew that that wasn't going to do nothing <clears throat> but start up a lot of stuff if I had just told her, no, I'm not giving you my number. So I did it decently enough in order to keep from fuss, uh, 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 you know, some kind of, you know, rapid or something going on and we out in public and she acting that crazy already. So <clears throat> I just kept my distance from her and I didn't have to even deal with her no more because I haven't heard no more from her. Thank the Lord. And then I was at a particular church where this um, young elder was at the church with us and he uh, used to get a lot of slack from the pastor. And uh, he had told me he was getting ready to leave the church and he said, you watch out you next i said what you mean he said you see how he always messing with me he gonna mess with you the same way i said why would you say that he said anybody he think that may have knowledge of the scriptures that he may think that may have a little bit more than him that's what he does to them and i'm like yeah, yeah he just saying that <laughs> so um come to find out <laughs> After he left, yeah, he was picking with me. He picked with me and picked with me and picked with me. But how I dealt with it, I had a meeting with him and his wife in his office about it. And he he just practically told me that I was, um, how he said, you just uh, in your feelings or something, in other words, that it's, it's in your head and it's just, it's just you and all this. And I'm like, it ain't in my head because other people see it too. You doing this out and open it. But after, you know, we had a couple meetings and everything and stuff, and it wasn't no different, no change or nothing. And even though his wife knew that this was going on and a lot of other people were saying that she was almost telling me that, you know, I need to respect him as him being the elder, uh, being the, uh, you know, the pastor of the church. And I'm like, how, how am I disrespecting him? I see him disrespecting me. So in other, I just left the church. That's that's all I could do, you know, because it was nothing else to do. It wasn't no peace or no kind of middle ground, nowhere there. But she was just telling me I need to let it grow because he was the, the pastor of the church and he was head of the church. So Amen. that's how I did with jealousy. Amen. We're going to have a <clears throat> apostle Johnson to speak here. I see your hand. Anything you'd like to say, sir? After he come forth, I'm going to have uh, Minister Isaiah. Uh, uh, Jamal, see your hand. I'm going to have Minister Isaiah. Is you still here? Okay. I'm going to have you to close us out once Elder Jamal speak. Uh, Apostle Johnson, are you still there? Are you still there? He's there. Speakers on. I'm mute. Chief Apostle Johnson. Elder Jamal, go ahead and speak. And we are waiting on Chief to see if he's going to come in. I'll be brief. When I first got to Louisiana 10 years ago, I, I partnered with a, with a local church in the area where I was at. And I immediately caught on to the spirit of evangelism. It's something that had been in my heart for years. 
So when the pastor started to come up with a, an evangelism ministry and he saw my fire for evangelism, he put me in charge of the ministry. So everything was working fine. He put he put three of the deacons in the group because they they showed up for the class. So when the deacons found out that they had to be under me, two of them left the group. Said that they did that they didn't have, you know, they had too much to do, too many responsibilities. And the pastor looked and he said, well, we need men in the evangelism ministry. I said, it's just, it's just, just brothers, just Deacon Spencer and brother Jamal. So I, we need men in the evangelism ministry to be out there to protect the ladies. And they just kept saying, well, I don't have time pastor. I don't have time. So I shook it off and said, okay. About three months later, they had no choice but to come back to me because they saw the ministry growing. And they said, well, bro, we're going to work with you and, and show you how to do things. I said, what is there that you need to show me? I said, I'm already leading the ministry and we've already grown from the 10 people we have. We've grown to 20. I said, and that's because we're out there. And our purpose is to be out there witnessing to people. I said, but you're welcome to join us. And the one that became chairman of the deacon boy said, I just need to show you how we do things here. I said, what's the difference between what I've been teaching the group and what you're going to teach that's going to be different? He said, you just don't have to have all that fire when you're evangelizing. I said, why not have all that fire? I said, because if you're not excited about Jesus, then nobody else is going to be. I said, these are people that are our neighbors. They see us every week. They see us from day to day. Some of them work with us. They live around us. So if we're going to be the light that we're supposed to be, then we need to be excited about who we say we are and who we serve. And at that point, the pastor came up to him and said, he's right. And he asked him, he said, so do you really have a problem serving under Brother Buckery? He said, no, nah, I don't have a problem serving under him. It's just that he ain't been here long enough. And I had literally been in the church maybe two months. And I just said, okay, Lord, you, you tell me what to do. And he just said, you just keep doing what I tell you to do, and I will deal with, with the other issue. To make a long story short, after I, left the, after I left the church about a year later, because I had to move back home to take care of family, those two, men, those two deacons, one, one left and he moved somewhere else, and the other one unfortunately fell ill. And I don't know what his what his circumstances are, but all I just prayed was for God to fix it. Amen. And, you know, and I, I speak ill will on no, but I just said, Lord, fix it. And I'm just praying that he didn't do that. He didn't do that. It was just a man. It was just a man's poor health. Amen. But it's just amazing how when people yell, we have to be mindful that. It's the spirit in us that they don't like. It's not. It's not us. God bless. God bless. Amen. Amen. Oh, you're definitely right. You know, we God says, do not lay your hands on the anointed. Do not put your hands on them. Do not misuse your brothers and sisters because things will manifest. God said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Vengeance is mine. So we have to be careful how we treat our brothers and sisters because God will get vengeance on how we mistreat one another. Amen. Apostle Johnson, are you there? <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
Well, before we get into go, before uh, we close out, I had that same scenario. I have to give mine. I had that same scenario up under the pastor when I was in the church building. And the first thing I told him, I said, God called me to preach. He said, but God didn't tell me. God don't have to tell you. He have to show you. See, he, he's telling me, God have to reveal to you that I'm ready. Now, in the process of me getting God preparing me, he saw the, the manifestation coming up on my life. He saw it. He allowed me to bring a message. So the first message he allowed me to bring, the people that was waiting to see me bring a message said, Marshall, whenever you get ready to bring a message, let me know. I said, okay. So when the opportunity came, I told everybody, I was so excited. I told everybody. And everybody came out and filled up the church. To come hear me bring a message. After the search, after the service was over, you know my pastor said, why did you tell everybody to come to hear you bring a message and you don't evangelize? And that hurted my spirit. And I looked into his face and I said, listen, I tell everybody to come to the church. I can't help it. They don't come. But these people asked and said, once I bring a message, they wanted to hear me. So that's what I did. Ever since then, he was trying to stop the elevation of what God has called me to do to bring the message. He hindered everything he could, every possible thing. And when I finally left the church, but you know, he holds regrets. He jealous. He envy because I tried to reach out to him on his birthday. I tried to reach out to him on, on Christmas. And this man would not reply back to my message. He saw. He knew I had something in it. He knew it. People get jealous and envy because God put anointing on us. And they, and they are jealous because you can draw more people than they can. You can encourage more people than they can. You live in a righteous life better than they are. Whatever the scenario may be, they see it and they envy. But how to kill it is with, with kindness, love, and compassion. And like I mentioned before, sometimes you got to cut it loose. I had to cut it loose. I'm not going to allow Nobody to stop what God has for me. You can you can be with me or you can be against me. Either or, you're not going to stop me. Amen. Amen. So on that note, my brothers and sisters. Elder Marshall. You. Yes. Elder, I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, Chief Apostle Johnson said he couldn't get off mute, but he's ready now if you want okay. to take this question. Okay. All right. Anyway. Come on, Chief. <laughs> Amen. I'm gonna say this in two seconds. Amen. Glory to God. I, I you, was hold hearing. Up, hold up. What was you it? say? What in how many seconds? I'm. I'm gonna say this quick and fast. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, all right. <laughs> we 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 hey, said hey. a question. We said a question. Uh huh. And the answer to that question is the Bible says, "Study to show thyself approved." Yes, sir. And the problem is. We don't study to show ourselves approved. We're looking for everybody else's validation. Now, if we hold on to what God has given us and we continue to study his word and perfect ourselves in the spirit, we don't even get up into wondering about how somebody feel, how are we doing. When you got to ask somebody, how would I preach? How would tonight go? Did I get the word across? You really ain't got it in the first place. That's right. Because right. if you have it, you're going to respond in a different mannerism than what you do. And so I just thank God that uh, the spirit of jealousy has no room in the kingdom of God. And you have to encourage each and every person to perfect their gift that God has given them. Many are called, 
but few are chosen. Amen. But we all came here with we all came here with purpose. We all came here with destiny. God bless you tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to say something. Amen. Hit it dead on the nose. We all came here with a purpose. We all come here with a destiny. And the purpose and the destiny is to reach that final goal. That's internal heaven. That is our destiny. That is our purpose. And we cannot, I repeat, as a body of Christ, we cannot be each jealous of each and one of our gifts and talents. There are, if you go to the book, it'll tell you everything that God has given us is to edify him. And we have to be a unit in one another. Amen. Thank you, Apostle, for your, your words. Thank you, each and every one of you who are came out to participate in the class. I pray that God has given you the insight and knowledge that how we are to defeat Jealousy, because it is on a rampage in the body of Christ. Amen. Minister Rose, would you do me the honor? I mean, Minister Isaiah, would you do me the honor to close us out, please? Thank you, Elder Bossy, for that nice program that you gave on jealousy. Us as leaders, we got to remember, it's not a competition. It's not a race. It was a race. We all lose. There's only one win winner. That's, That's the right. Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That's right. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, Father God, I thank you for bringing us here today, Father God. That's always I say, I pray that everything was here was said was please me, Father God, to everyone. And Father God, I just tell everyone to conquer your jealousy, Father God, through love, gratitude, and grace, and your mercy, Father God. So, Father God, I just ask you to be with each and every one here again, Father God, that we get understanding, Father God, that if we have problems with jealousies and different problems in our lives that people are attacking us, Father God, just to ask them to reach out to you, Father God. I had that. I have talk with you, Father God, as always, Father God. I ask you for grace and your strength to everyone that's on this line, Father God. As you continue to be with each and every one of us, Father God, you give us mercy and understanding, Father God. And as we reach out and take our daily walk, Father God, be it through our church houses, through our streets, Father God, that we be walking with your word, that you touch our body and our minds, that we send out your spiritual strength, Father God. That any attack that come against us, that we spread your word, Father God, that you push it off us, Father God, and all jealousies that you push away, Father God, that let them know that we're just sending out, we just your message, Father God, that we're sending out your message, that we can just continue to touch hearts and gather your seats in, Father God. Father God, with your grace and your wisdom, your understanding, your love, Father God, I just want to say thank you, Father God, in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.